Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 2.3. We're going to talk about electrons and blocks of the periodic table, and let's hop right to it. So, atoms come with electrons, but it is helpful to think of atoms as adding electrons one at a time. This means we need a filling order, okay? Offbaugh helped figure this out. Offbaugh is German for building up. We add electrons to the lowest energy level first. Why do we add to the lowest energy first? Because low energy is most stable. Okay? So the most stable is low. If something is high energy, so if you think of a uh, skyscraper, if it's high energy, it's shaking around, it's going to fall down, right? And when it falls down, it's low energy because it's not going to move anywhere else. Okay? Low energy is stable. High energy is falling apart. Periodic table shows the order of this filling. So there are blocks in here. This is the S block. This guy up here is an S too. Then we have P. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are you drawing a periodic table? Are you looking at a periodic table and labeling this part? Good. D and F. So the periodic table helps us figure out this order by going reach. Okay. And we'll show that. How many columns are in the S blocks? Let's hop back. How many columns are in the S block? There's one, two columns. There are two, if it would hop there. Two. How many electrons are there? There's two. Okay. So 1s2 is the most that it can hold. So what happens is, whoops, let me hop back here. So when I do this, the first period on the periodic table is going to start with the 1. 1. And this is hydrogen. A hydrogen would be S1. Oh. Now helium is this guy and this guy. Helium is one, first row, S block, two, and it's filled. Oh, then if I have what's below hydrogen, lithium, lithium would be those two, one, S, two. Now I'm in the second row, S block, one, two, S, one. So one, S, two is the most electrons S can hold electrons for 1s. 3s2 is different how? 3s2 is the third energy shell, or third energy level. Okay. How many electrons are there in P, D, and F block? Well, when I count, if you have a periodic table, I keep hitting the wrong way, pardon me. P has 1, 2, 3, 4, one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So that means that it has six electrons. P is six. D has 10 columns, 10 electrons. F has 14 columns, 14 electrons. So the most P can hold is six. The most D can hold is 10. The most F can hold is 14. Orbital diagram. So we're going to do some orbital diagrams here. Show Hun's rule. Everybody gets one before anybody gets two electrons on the same energy level. And the Pauli exclusion principle says only two electrons fit in an orbital. An orbital for us, boys and girls, is a box. This would be the one S orbital. Okay? If it fits two electrons, the first electron would be up, second electron would be down. Crazy. Let's do a, another example. Give the orbital diagram for neon. So when I look at the periodic table, neon has 10 electrons. And I'm going to actually kick out of here and slideshow. Boop, boop, boop. But it's not over. I know you wish, but it's not. So if I'm going to do the orbital diagram for neon, here's neon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with low energy, 1s, and I'm going to draw a box. I hope you're drawing a box too. These first two spots would be an up arrow and a down arrow. These next two spots would show 2s, and that is another box with an up arrow and a down arrow. This part right here, to get to neon would be, notice this is the P block, right? Second level P block has six electrons. Remember, each box can hold two. So as I fill this up, I boron gets an electron, which is an up arrow. Hun's rule says everybody's got to get one. So I can't do up, down. That's wrong. Eh, wrong, 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 wrong. So that means the next one from carbon would be up. The next one from nitrogen would be up. Now that everybody's got one, now I start filling out 
the down, down, down until I get to P6. Neon is P6. This would be P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. Okay, so neon ends in P6. That's the orbital diagram for neon. Let's do the same thing for iron. Okay. Now iron is down here. Okay. So I'm trying to draw this a little bit smaller. 1s, so it's going to go across to the 1s. Wee! 1s, 2. Boop, boop. This next part would be 2s, 2. Boop, boop. This next part is 2p. And notice I kicked this over a little bit. 2p, 3 orbitals. And I fill it up because I'm going to stop at iron, which is 26. Up, 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 down, down, down. Okay? That gets me to 10. Boop. 3s. Mm -hmm -hmm. Up, down. Now I'm at 3p. Up, 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 down down, down. So up, 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 down, down, down. Now I'm at 4s. Oh no, I'm running out of room. 4s. Uh, there's a box. Up, down. Here's my 4s. Now here's where it gets weird. This is the D block. Remember we labeled it D? The D block actually does not, does not, does not, does not um, go to 4. This D block actually kind of is up higher. So it's 3D. So this first one is 3D. This would be, so this part is 3D. This part would be 4D. This part would be 5D. So 3D has five boxes because it has 10 electrons. One, two, three, four, five. So if I have iron, I would fill it up as one, two, three, four, five. And iron is one, two, three, four, five, six with one down. Okay? This is the orbital notation for iron. Okay. Electron configurations take up less space. So I'm going to hop back to my periodic table and we'll do those ones that are on there. Do, 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 do. So the electron configuration, the first thing we're going to do is carbon. So carbon, those first two are 1s2. Two. two because here's one, here's one. Second row, one, two, second row, second period, S block, two, 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 one, two. Carbon, second row, P block, two. That's the electron configuration of carbon. Yay. Rubidium. Rubidium. Ooh, all the way down there, that's going to be a lot of them. So let's get started with rubidium. RB. Notice how it's going to start the exact same. 1s2. Second row. S block. Two electrons. Still second row. P block. Six electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you get that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next part. Now I'm on the third row. S block. Two electrons. I'm going to circle rubidium so I know when to stop. Then I'm on the third row. P block. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm on the fourth row. Fourth row. S block. Two. Then remember, this D block is weird. Oh, weird. Three D. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three D, ten. Now my P block jumps back up to four. Four P. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now 37 is rubidium. So that's, I'm on the fifth row, S block, but only one, because it's in the first one, right? And that's rubidium. Yay. Samarium. Woo, I don't know where samarium is. Samarium, 62. I don't want to do 62. I don't want to do 62 all the way down there. And you know what? I'm going to show you a shortcut with that. So let's check out that shortcut. SM is a nightmare. There's a lot of repetition, so a way was developed to show the outer electrons only. Valence are the S and P block. The other blocks are called core, meaning they don't do much. Okay? Core notation is synonymous with noble gas notation. So for the following elements, let's do the core notation and the regular notation for it. So let's look at calcium. 
get rid of this. Do 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 do. So I'm gonna do calcium. Wee. Same thing I did before. So I'm gonna go to twenty. One s two. Boop. Two s two. Boop. Two p six. Boop. Third row s block two. Third row p block six. Calcium is fourth row s block two. Okay. Now core notation. Remember the valence electrons are only the outer energy level. Well, that's the only one that's got four. So what I'm going to write instead of that is I'm going to say what element is 18, right? 3P6 is argon. So calcium is argon in brackets to represent all of these. And then what's left over is 4S2. That is called the core notation or noble gas notation. That's pretty easy. Then DY66. So DY is number 66. Let me find 66, 66, 66. Here's 66. So let's do that one. So 66, the preceding noble gas for number 66 would be 54. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to do xenon. And now I've got to do 55 and 56. 55 and 56, sixth row, S block, 2. 57. Now remember, this is bumped up 1. Fifth row, D block, 1. Now if I'm going to 66, I've got to go from 58 to 66. Now, this guy, see how this is on the sixth row? And you go, oh, that's probably 6F. We know it's the F block. But really, it's 4F. And 5F is this guy right here. 4F. So the F block, it really kind of bumped up 2. So instead of being 6, it's really 4. So can you remember that? The D block is 1 less, and the F block is 2 less. So it's 4F. How many? Let me get my counting skills on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. 4F9. Yay. Review. Hey, we're reviewing. So, so the blocks are SPDF. Periodic table helps. D block goes up 1. And what does the F block go up? 2. So don't forget your blocks. Toodles. Now I got a.